both are live and available for you. So feel free to do that. And we have an awesome show today because today we're talking about foundation tricks to looking younger. Absolutely. And, um, I, you know, I have to give credit where credit is due. One of our top uh, color analysts said, hey, you really need to give a foundation, uh, a foundation training, this new foundation, um, you know, and all the anti-aging benefits. And I said, she is right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a lot about why we chose what we chose and um, what a great uh, uh, foundation this is for those reasons and a couple of other tricks. Mm -hmm. And the foundation you're talking about is our new Moisture Complex Aloe Advanced Foundation. So if anyone's interested, that's the foundation we're talking about today. It is supercharged with aloe, and we are comparing it to an older formula that we used to have. That was, of course, our best-selling formula. Now, this new formula is our bestseller, but... It skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you hear us compare, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the old moisture complex versus the new aloe advanced moisture complex. So we don't want to get you confused out there. We want to make sure you're on the same page as us, but we also are going to be talking about all the benefits of using certain types of foundations over others, the tint in your foundation, what shade it should be. We're really going in depth. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to be here. And Holly, good morning to you. It's always good to see you. How things in Alaska. Yeah. And I guess we can jump into it. We have a few of you guys on. I do see our numbers growing. So just comment down below and say, hey, and we'll jump right into our first tip. Well, uh, I, I and I think I'll jump in real quick because um, I am the only person here that is worried about aging between you and I. Um, I'm always worried about aging. Okay. I will always tell skincare tips. Yeah, um, well, we always need to be using well, anti-aging products. Let me rephrase. I am the one that's consciously applying products that I feel are give a more youthful look rather than age me. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I love about the, this new um, at Moisture Complex Aloe um, is basically the things that we chose for this formula are the things that makeup artists, uh, dermatologists, the whole the whole gamut tell us that these days this is what we need to be using for our skin to look younger. So one of the things that I think we probably should talk about a little bit is um, is heavier foundation versus a lighter foundation because that's um, you know, you kind of think, oh, I'm going to slap on all the foundation I can get on my face and just keep layering it on and nobody will notice that I have wrinkles. Oh, contraire. Um, basically, uh, what professionals in the industry tell us is that the very best thing you can do is use a lighter foundation and a creamy concealer. Not a cream concealer but a creamy liquid concealer um, that has a lot of moisture in it. Now, I'll take the first part first. Why a lighter weight concealer? Do you know why, Sarah? I don't know, why? Because um, it, when you use a lighter weight concealer, the foundation doesn't tend to sink down into your pores. And you combine that like we did in the aloe rich or in the aloe moisture complex. And what you have is extreme amounts of moisture sinking. Do we have an illustration of this? I, sinking down into the skin, providing a cushion. Perfect. So imagine this is your skin and your skin is sliced and it's like really microscopic. What happens is when you have a moisture rich foundation, the blue dots are the moisture and the little beige dots are the foundation and, and that is a moisture rich foundation. The blue dots or the moisture sinks down into the skin and plumps up the wrinkles as you apply the foundation. Now what happens? You get, uh, now also application matters, we can talk about that in a bit, but you get a smoother surface to apply your foundation on. Now, why is that important? 
Because if you apply your foundation to a drier surface and you don't pump it up, then we tend to be drier. I think we tend to be drier. And you don't pump it up, what's going to happen? I think we have an illustration on that too. Yes. Is that the, the foundation is going to lay on your skin kind of like a roller coaster, you know, with the high points and the low points. And the foundation is actually going to congregate. It's going to tend to go to crevices, the wrinkles, and kind of sit there. Imagine filling holes on your wall with spackle. Have you ever noticed that when you do the spackle, the spackle goes into the holes, but pretty much doesn't go on the surface, or not if you're doing it well? Well, that's true of your foundation. And what makes it doubly problematic is that your skin then, if it hasn't been hydrated with your foundation, tends to suck all the moisture out of the foundation that's left and pull the foundation down into the lines and crevices where, um, and this is important, people say, well, you know, does it matter that the foundation is sunk into my lines and my crevices? Absolutely. Because let's talk about light. Light is going to hit the high points and it's going to put the low points in shadow. Now, if any of you out there are artists that do sketches or whatever, what you're going to realize is that you put something in shadow, it's going to look darker. And that's what your wrinkles are. They're like little dark lines all over your face. So, in fact, what you have done is exacerbated or made the lines look more prominent beyond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so moral of the story here is make sure you're using a awesome hydrating foundation with tons of skincare benefits to help plump up the skin so those pigments don't fall into any fine lines and wrinkles and show off your wrinkles i guess yeah it's like you know if you want to look older use a thicker foundation and let it sink into your lines and wrinkles mm -hmm. if you want to look younger you have to do a two-step process which i'm going to show you i actually demoed it I think I have a cat hair somewhere around my nose. So if I keep like playing with my face, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but we, we have a two-step program, uh, as it were, on how to apply your foundation and your concealer for your most useful effect. Mm -hmm. And I got up early this morning, it was a little crazy, and I decided, yeah, I'm gonna show this. I'm gonna show um, how we do this because it really works. And first of all, can we show the funny picture of me with the tape on my face? Yes, I was just getting ready for that. <laughs> okay, so this is what I did. I got up, I took masking tape of all things, slapped it down my face, created like a line. And then I started applying my miraculous concealer and um, eyeshadow base. And this is what I do every day. Uh, and when I, the reason that I do, do this in this elongated triangle is because I need a lot of concealer. I do. And I want it to be a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. But when you apply this way and you go out to the top of the cheekbone and down through the nasal labial fold, and I will show you an after in a bit, it actually makes you look younger mm -hmm. because it looks like you have light shining on your face. Mm -hmm. um, so here I am doing the work just when you guys think thought I didn't get like dig down deep clearly there's the evidence mm -hmm. and then the result um, of that that this is the um, um, moisture complex with aloe the new foundation and the um, well oh yeah I forgot we did this one this actually shows where to use the miraculous um, as I call it, and um, or where I use the miraculous, the triangle, I do it down the nose, mm -hmm. when I don't have a cat here in the glasses, ah, um, and on the chin. And some of you, you know, you can experiment with running it up your chin or not. I don't because I've got these. Um, and the result is... <laughs> Going as fast as I can. There we go. It's this. So what you're seeing here is a lot of things. Mm -hmm. 
you're seeing me with the foundation on and it's not a heavy foundation you can see through the foundation it's not heavy but um, you're seeing also more opaque areas where I've used the miraculous to shape my face cover and really jump in there and get those lines because the bags under my eyes look like I'm packing for an eight month tour of the world. I mean, they are big. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's further exacerbated by something you see here. And um, this is an anti-aging trick, trick as well. My skin is thin with age. And so if you're looking at it, it tends to look a little more purple than my skin used to look when I was young. My skin when I was young was about the color it is with the foundation, but now that I'm older, you start to become a little purple. Now you might ask, why is that? Well, there are three processes that we go through as we age. And one of them is our skin thins. Another is that we have less vascular control or conversely more vascular leakage. So, you know, the blood vessels become a little more prominent under the skin. So you mix prominent blood vessels under the skin with thinner skin. Um, and then on top of everything, you lose melanocytes. So while you had the melanocytes, you actually were disguising some of this activity that you're seeing with thinner skin. But without the melanocytes um, that we lose with age, it all becomes very obvious. Now, I will throw something in here, and I, I don't want to confuse you guys, but I've got a lot of things going on here at once. Um, we have a product in a capsule, vitamin C, fresh vitamin C in a capsule, and that does help with inflammation. Um, so if you've got some redness from inflammation, I recommend the vitamin C. But that's all skin care related. This, what we're talking about is makeup. And so if you, what, for whatever reason, um, I urge you to kind of take a look and see something like this. Because until I really looked, I didn't realize I was looking more purple. Um, and what, what do we do about it? Well, we go to the color wheel. Because when you want to disguise something, you use the complement of that color. And it just disappears like magic. I we talk to you guys probably a dozen times about how fantastic our color wheel is and how the green negates the red. And the, well, what is the complement of yellow on the color wheel there? Purple is the complement of yellow. <laughs> yes. So one of the things you may notice in our newer, our newest foundation is that it's a little teeny tiny more yellow based. Now I'm not talking about Big Bird, no. I'm talking about something that you probably wouldn't even notice. But if you look at the foundation on my face, you'll see that the purple is actually negated and my skin, my flesh looks like real flesh rather than this purple mottled mess. Mm -hmm. you know, I, and now that you know, once I saw this, I was like, oh gosh, I look really bad. But you know, that's what happens as you age. This is, and I have to admit, I was not always excellent about sun protection. Which is why I teach those of you who have not, you know, had this problem, make sure to use your sun protection. But here you can see that if you want to go out in public and you don't want to look on the purple side, Voila, moisture rich with aloe, our new foundation will fix it. Mm -hmm. So, if uh, just to, I want to make sure everyone knows the products you are talking about. When you were referring to Miraculous, that's the Miraculous Cream Concealer and Eyeshadow Base. And then the Moisture Complex Aloe Advanced Foundation is the foundation that you are using. And that's the one that we've been talking about all the benefits of using aloe in your skincare. So, you're really, and we're not even diving into the skincare benefits part of that foundation. And we're strictly just doing kind of the color part of it and how tricks to use when doing and picking the right foundation for you. 
But I really, I, I think it is extremely important to see the difference of what a slightly, slightly and yellow right, tint. You won't be able to tell the difference. Or you likely, I mean, you'd have to be like a color whiz or you'd have to hold one against the other. Mm -hmm. so once it's applied, you won't see a difference in color. You will see a difference in your look of health, mm -hmm. your look of youth. Um, and I, and it, the mor I call it miraculous because it is. Um, and all those other words don't matter. It's just a miracle. It's a miracle concealer. It's a miracle highlighter. It's a miracle um, eyeshadow base. But what you see here is that it actually makes my face look like it's illuminated with light. Mm -hmm. And it helps create shape to my face. Because what happens when you put on a, a foundation or a heavy foundation? Yeah, your face looks flat because you've kind of um, you've you've kind of hidden some of the contours, you know, that that you would see with light. Well, this puts it back, and it makes your face look like it's illuminated, um, and that gives a healthy, youthful glow. So, <laughs> well, I wanted to give our shades for reference if you are interested. So currently, um, the concealer I use for all over is the, the Miraculous Cream in the shade Neutral. And I also use Light for under my eyes as um, so those are my concealers that I highly recommend if you are somebody that is roughly my skin tone. And for foundation, I am oh, using... Let me just interrupt. Skin tone with these products is not a big deal. You don't have to look at these products and say, I'm going to match my skin tone. You look at the products and you say, is this lighter than my skin? Mm -hmm. And if you are, you know, two, three shades close to that, it blends in beautifully while it's still colored. Mm -hmm. That's why it's miraculous. Yeah, and then for the foundation, the Aloe Advanced Foundation, I use the shade Ivory. And I use Natural. Mm -hmm. So as you can tell, we, we both use totally different colors or shades, but it gives the same awesome result and it just healthy, hydrated looking, radiant skin. And it really does give you that glow. And I, you know, I want to let you guys know that I really love you because I'm showing the picture of my face and it is awful. Um, but once I get my my consumer on and my miraculous on, I mean I can face the world. It it is you always say something is worse than it really is. You look great without any makeup on. But oh, you're so sweet. I'm gonna head over to the comments just to make sure that we're, in case we're getting any questions. So hello to Cher and Marguerite and Kim, Kayla, happy morning to you. Um, let's see, go a few <laughs> Okay, so um, could you, Kayla's asking to please review uh, the color shades of your foundation and color swatches. So what I'll do, Kayla, is I'll swatch them on my hand and then I'll insert them into the comments when we get off. So you have those for reference. And then good morning, Joanne. Um, Kim, the concealer that we're talking about is the Miraculous Cream Concealer. And I base. Don't get it twisted. It, I'm telling you, it's a great concealer. It's a miraculous concealer. Mm -hmm. It is a miraculous highlighter. Mm -hmm. It is a miraculous eyeshadow base all in one product yeah it, i i i'm trying to play it down because i did like a whole video about how much i love this product and how obsessed i was with it but it's a really good product it's such i the coverage is awesome it doesn't just oh it's so good and when you think about it being a concealer and an eyeshadow base it has properties so when you think about an eyeshadow base, it's there to so your eyeshadow doesn't fall into fine lines. It kind of just creates this layer on top of the skin that hides any imperfections that you have. So it's really giving the power of an eyeshadow base into a concealer. So you're getting all of those benefits in one. And it's designed to work with the new foundation. So what I do is I put it on first. 
I put it on, you know, my, my big triangle, as you saw, um, down my nose, um, over on, on this area a little bit, and the chin. Mm -hmm. That's important for me because I have none. Um, and my chin tends to receive. Oh, that's a good tip. Um, if something receives and you don't want it to receive, like I have a really weak chin. It's like, but if you highlight it or use something that actually I use miraculous to highlight it, it pushes it forward if it's lighter. If you want it to be pushed backwards, you push put something deeper. Like a lot of people who are worried about defining their jawline will put a deeper color under the, the jawbone. That makes it receive. So here for me, you may not need it. You know, like Kimberly has a chin, so she may not she may not need it. But down the nose, it's really important that I put a little circle on the tip of my nose and that triangle. That triangle is perfect. Mm -hmm. it cuts through the nasal labial fold. And believe it or not, another makeup artist trick when you're highlighting like this is if you cut through a fold that you really don't want to be prominent. And um, if you look at this illustration, you can see it. You look at it on the left, look at it on the right. And because I put that area of light right through the nasal labial fold, it kind of hides what's going on there and makes you think, oh, that's much less prominent. Mm -hmm. So I have two questions that I think really go well together and I'm, I'm gonna combine them. Um, Cher is asking about spider veins on the face and then we got another question that says, some people confuse the swatch fan with the color wheel. Can you show the difference? So. Um, now, with spider veins on the face, I would recommend going with the complementary color like we talked about earlier. So, and the color wheel. Mm -hmm. So, a color wheel is what we all see when we think of, um, I want to say back in like middle school or high school when you're first learning. I, I don't, you know what I'm talking about. And if you look at a wheel and it has purple on one side, the opposite is going to be yellow. If there's green on one side, the opposite is going to be red. So it, the color wheel is a completely different thing than our swatch fans. Our swatch fans are um, what you can wear within your season. So two totally different things. And we further confuse the issue by having a concealer wheel yeah. that has colors in it mm -hmm. that work um, to suppress anything like spider veins for example mm -hmm. you could go to the concealer wheel to the green color there's like a green minty color mm -hmm. and you apply that and it basically makes reverts what you're seeing there back to your skin tone mm -hmm. um, so if it's bad uh you you can do that and um correct your red and of course uh anything that uh you, you can do in terms of like for example, I said that as we get older, we lose some vascular control, meaning, you know, that our blood vessels could get leaky. It sounds gross, but it's just normal. Anyway, what you can do is look at your nutrition because some things, so there are certain vitamins that you can take that will help with that. Um, but, you know, once, once you've got the capillaries, you probably need to just worry about covering them versus trying to make them go away. Mm -hmm. And then I I just wanted to let you know, people are loving uh, your references. So um, I just wanted to give you, like Kim is saying, thank you for showing us this. Um, and also I had another question that I thought was really good. It was, I'm so sorry, I forget who asked this, but it was asking um, the highlighting color. When you use a concealer, it should be lighter than your skin tone, yes. So if you are planning like the area under your eye that you were talking about, that triangle should be a shade lighter. And remember, everything you do goes up and out to really. But, but uh, a shade or two or mm -hmm. three. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I use um, the neutral, but I also use the light. And, you know, it kind of depends. And I, I, as I was telling a friend of mine today who was asking about this product, I have all three. And, you know, I use them kind of interchangeably. Like if my, the bags under my eyes are 
awful and because I'm an artist, I might take the light and just stick it in those crevices, those very deep troughs and then do my regular routine with the neutral. And then ultimately, when I'm applying my foundation, um, it all blends together. And that's something else I need to tell you guys about foundation application. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about our foundation, the one that is a miracle, um, or any foundation. Do not rub your foundation on like cream. It is not designed to be rubbed into your skin. It is designed to be patted on top of your skin. And that makes a big difference because let's go back to the spackle reference. So when you put, it, put on spackle on a wall, you're filling holes and rub it across, rub it across and the spackle, spackle goes into all the crevices. What did we say we do not want to happen? the foundation going in your crevices. So if you've got a highly moisturizing foundation, like our Moisture Complex Aloe, you can pat, pat, pat all over and get the right effect, leave the pigment on the surface of the skin, let the moisturizing elements sink into the skin, plump up your cushion, and you'll end up with a smooth face. And I think the evidence is right over there. <laughs> it, you know, it looks like you have a smooth face when, in truth, it's not little for smooth. And don't forget, um, using that padding technique is actually really good for uh, for skincare purposes. Like um, we talk about, people always talk about roller balls and things like that. It, using a found um, a blending sponge kind of gives you the same effect as well. So mm -hmm. not, only the, not only is it a great tool to use for applying your foundation, it's also really good for your skin. So highly recommend. Yeah. It, I would not be here if I didn't go off topic because <laughs> this is my thing. Um, and I did want to say this. When you need to, you have a lot of warmth in your hands. And if you don't, you can rub them together, you know, and instead of making fire, you're making warm. And then if you use your hand to pat your face, what will happen is if you, if you feel like you need something to be melted deeper into your skin, and I'm talking skincare here, I am not talking foundation, mm -hmm. but the warmth of your hand can move that in a little deeper, plus it feels really good. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to bring up a really good question from Kim. She asked, should we wait a bit after moisturizing to put on concealer and foundation? And yes, you should, because moisturizers are all different. Uh, some have film formers on them. Some um, are meant to sit on the skin and soak in until you apply something else. So it's each moisturizer is completely different. So rule of thumb is to always wait for it to dry down so you get the best benefits from your moisturizer and then apply your primers. And and here I need to say that um, you can also pat, you know, with a paper towel just to kind of um, let if you're in a big hurry. I don't recommend it every day. And in between the moisturizer and the foundation, a really great step is a primer because um, I have this weird thing that happens to me. When I'm wearing my foundation, uh, often, and if I've worn it all day, my foundation might change a little color. And I notice it, you know, so it's enough for me to notice. And I'm thinking, you know, it's looking a little orange on me. I need to reapply. But what's happened is, did you know that your foundation, certain people exude certain hormones and chemicals that can make your foundation oxidize, like rust? So those of you who, and we get this question all the time, you know, what do I do about um, my foundation changing color? Primer, that's what it's designed for. It creates a layer that keeps your foundation from absorbing those things and oxidizing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Linda Webster just asked, uh, I'm not even going to say the primer that she asked. If you use, what primer do you use? 
Well, I use both. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to sway your opinion, but she yeah. asked, "Do you use the Velvet Perfection Foundation Primer?" Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I do. But I also, from time to time, will use the Underglow. And here's how I decide the difference: for night, when you know you're not really dealing with reflected light so much, I use the Velvet uh, Foundation Primer because of its blurring quality. It's, you hear a lot of buzz about blur. Well, this has kind of a blurring quality. So at night, you know, the velvet foundation is my thing. But in the daytime, I go all crazy with the underglow under my foundation, on top of my foundation, because I like a little sparkle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then a uh, last question that I see up here that I want to mention is Kim is asking what tool to use for applying your foundation in 100%, yeah, the blending sponge, the soft focus blending sponge. Clearly, I'm not holding up a clean one because this is the one I use. It's like it's rough and uh -huh. um, I use it every single day. And I also have one to apply my skincare as well. So that's another really great tip. And for any of you guys who are worried, you know, who have actually have to do the triangle bit, do you do the triangle bit, Sarah? Oh, you absolutely. Put, you can probably see it on my face right now. I can. <laughs> so for any of you who do that and you need to blend in the little areas, the tip is great. But for the patting on and the blending, mm, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I, I was going to say, you and I both are soft focus blending sponge peoples, but... I don't worry if you're a foundation brush type of person. Yeah, there's... You can... The, the caution on your foundation brush that I will give you is you see how the, the, the bristles are light colored? And I, I think I have a couple here. Um, always use a synthetic bristle with your foundation. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you waste foundation. It'll suck into the natural bristles and it you, know, you end up washing it out. But if you use a natural bristle, it, it pretty much will transfer. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have been trying to cut our shows a little bit shorter, and I am so sorry if we did not get to your questions today. We're trying to cut our Monday shows to 30 minutes because I know some of you guys are like, wow, it's taking forever. But if you guys have more questions, either email them to us and we can do shows on it, or you can leave them in the comments down below and we'll be happy to answer them. What I'm going to do, I am going to swatch the foundation shades on my arm and put them in the comments so you have that available as reference. And that's going to be on the Aloe Advanced Moisture Complex. And then, you know, I can do the Miraculous Cream as well. Do not worry. I'll do the concealer and the foundation. I would because it really runs a, mm -hmm. a broad range of being effective, you know, color-wise. Mm -hmm. I see something I want to address before you say goodbye to everybody. Marguerite says she has the product, but she doesn't look like me when she's done. Right, me. It, we, you know, we can kind of, you, you, you should, and, or better, um, and write me, and we'll see if, you know, if there's something we can adjust with your application that'll make you really fabulously happy. And that just reminded me, we do have a new email address that goes directly to us, so you don't have to worry about it getting lost in our company side of things. So it is Sarah and Lucinda at gmail.com. S-A-R-A and A-N-D Lucinda L-U-C-I-N-D-A at gmail.com. So and we created it just for you guys. It's like the bat phone. Yep. It, yes. No more of these lost emails anymore. We're, we're going to get back to you and we promise. So once again, if you have any more questions, email us or leave them in the comments down below. We will absolutely do that. Um, and we hope you guys have a fantastic Monday. Start mm -hmm. off another week strong. And don't forget, Wine About It is Wednesday. So got to be there for that. We'll too. do it 12. Wednesday. Yeah. All right. So at noon, EST on Wednesday, we'll also be doing color analysis. So see you.